is the attorney for whistleblower Gary Shapley, Tristan Levitt. He's also the president of Empower Oversight. Tristan, uh, your reaction to that reporting, specifically this, this allegation that your client was the one breaking the law. It's clearly utterly ridiculous on its face. And we've seen this throughout, that those are the kind of threats the Hunter Biden's legal team made. Last summer, Chris Clark told the prosecutors, even before this threat to put Joe Biden on the stand, that charging Hunter Biden would be a career killer for them. And he's trying what he can to make it be a career killer for our clients as well. And so it's, it's unfortunate, but it's not a surprise at all. It clearly has no grounding in fact. And in fact, the judge up in Delaware, Mary Ellen Norieka, noted that because the pleadings from Hunter's legal team had asked that Chairman Jason Smith's amicus brief, giving further details about the whistleblower disclosures, be removed from the docket because they claimed that, again, that there was grand jury or other information there that shouldn't have been. And Judge Noriega really smacked that down, saying that making such broad allegations was irresponsible of them. What is your client saying now that we know that they actually wouldn't even probably have asked him for the guilty plea at all? Had they not come forward, I mean, imagine if they didn't come forward. So what's his reaction, Ben? Well, I, I think there are several key points that have stuck out to Gary. First off is that knowing now what was happening uh, between the prosecutors and the defense counsel really adds a whole new dimension for the investigators. They were cut out from the meetings that the prosecutors had with defense counsel, which seemed unusual to them at the time. Now we know about all these interactions. Specifically, the threat to have Joe Biden testify came at a really important time, and I think it's important for your viewers to understand. That letter was sent on Halloween in 2022, and that letter came at a time when, uh, assist, or when U.S. Attorney David Weiss was about to have the 2014 to 2015 tax charges, including a felony for 2014 for uh, making false reports on his income taxes about hiding his Burisma income, those were about to expire, the statute of limitations. And Weiss had a decision to make. And so I don't think it's a coincidence at all that Chris Clark is writing to Weiss and saying, hey, we would put the president on the stand at a time when he's making a decision about whether to let these Burisma charges go. So I think that's very significant. The other thing that I think really stands out to the investigators is that this more than anything, abundantly demonstrates why there should have been an, a special counsel appointed from the exactly. very outset of this investigation. And well, so, you know, it should have happened earlier. The fact that even then, at that moment, they should have immediately appointed him one. Well, but the, the also the idea that we've, we've discovered the president's using these pseudonyms to communicate the JRB, you know, all, the, uh, all these, uh, these uh, whether it's their acronyms or pseudonyms, to disguise his identity. Why would you do that if it was just a friendly conversation between father and son? I mean, that also uh, gives more credence to what your client and the whistleblowers have been saying all along, that this needed to be delved into seriously by an objective prosecutor with no political ties, none. Absolutely. And what you see instead, looking at the information that Senator Chuck Grassley has put out there from unrelated whistleblowers, is that when this information, for instance, about the FD-1023 from the FBI alleging the, that Burisma bribed not only Hunter Biden, but Joe Biden, that being presented to the Delaware U.S. Attorney's Office, the IRS agents were cut out. Just five weeks later, the same assistant U.S. attorney that received those allegations was telling investigators, you can't ask anything about the dad. I mean, this investigation was hobbled and hamstrung from the very beginning because people refused to see what was right in front of their faces. Well, remember, uh, Tristan Garland was saying early on that, the, that Weiss had a complete authority that he had a broad, you know, a, a berth, a wide berth in which to operate. And that clearly is not the case. No question. And what these articles also revealed was something that's very, very significant, which is that less than five weeks after Merrick Garland swore to Congress, in fact, to Senator Grassley specifically, that there would be, that Weiss would not have any interference by the Justice Department, you see that an official from the deputy attorney general's office yeah. responded to an inquiry from Chris Clark, who's trying to get anyone at DOJ to say uh, where to go if Weiss charged him.